Hey everyone, and welcome to unit two. So today we're starting our second unit of the course, which is going to be on morality or ethics. We're going to use those words interchangeably. So ethics or morality is basically the study of what we should or shouldn't do. What's morally right? What's morally wrong? What are our ethical obligations? What are our moral obligations? What do we owe to other people? What's the right thing to do? What's the wrong thing to do? That's ethics. It's the philosophical field. It's the area of philosophy that studies what it's right or wrong to do. So it's uh, often considered a normative enterprise, where normative is a fancy jargon word, meaning having to do with what you should or shouldn't do. Uh, so normative means what are the norms by which we ought to live our lives? What are the rules by which we ought to live our lives? Uh, epistemology is sometimes thought to be a normative enterprise about what we should or shouldn't believe, what it's right or wrong to believe when beliefs are justified. And so it Epistemology, which we'll study later, is sort of the normativity of belief and knowledge, what we should believe, what we shouldn't believe, given the evidence we have. So it's sort of the normative questions about belief, whereas ethics asks normative questions about action, how we should act, what we should do. Uh, is killing in self-defense okay? Is that morally good or bad? Uh, is it ethically acceptable to eat meat? Some people, some vegans and vegetarians think that it's morally wrong to eat meat. It's ethically bad to eat meat. Other people think it's morally okay. I don't think anyone thinks you have a moral obligation to eat meat. I don't know anyone who thinks that not eating meat is morally wrong. But maybe someone out there thinks that. Uh, and these should hopefully uh, be clearly different from questions about legality. What's legal or illegal is easy to look up. I mean, it's hard to look up. There are a lot of laws and a lot of them are written kind of in a difficult to understand way. But basically, like we know whether killing in self-defense is legal or illegal. We know whether or not eating meat is legal. Uh, but Hopefully we can all agree that what's legal and what's morally right or wrong, those are two different questions. That's why people want to change laws sometimes, is that they think something legal is morally wrong and so should become illegal so that no one does this morally wrong thing, or that something illegal is morally permissible and so it shouldn't be illegal people should be allowed to do it that's what arguments about uh abortion and whether or not it should be legal those are really uh we know whether or not it's legal but people who want to change whether or not it's legal uh want to do so based on what they think about morality uh, and obviously there was a time where you know things like uh uh, racial and sexual discrimination were legal, clearly those were still wrong. They were morally bad even when they were legal. Uh, so whether or not something's legal and whether or not you'll face legal consequences is a totally separate issue from what we're talking about in this unit. Uh, if you want to know what's legal or illegal, uh, talk to a lawyer. Uh, don't talk to a philosopher. But if you want to talk about what's morally right and wrong, what we should or shouldn't do, sort of putting the law to one side, that, that is a philosophical question. Whether or not it's ever morally okay to break the law. Do you have a moral duty to follow the law even if the law is incorrect? That's an ethical question. Uh, when you don't agree with the law, are you still obligated to follow it? If you know you won't get caught or something, can you break it? Or do you have a moral duty as a member of society to follow all its laws. Those are sort of interesting ethical questions, some of which we'll talk about, some of which we won't. This week, specifically, 
we're talking about the trolley problem. So hopefully, uh, if you haven't read the Thompson paper, the Judith Jarvis Thompson, or at least the part of the paper that was assigned, if you haven't read it yet, that's okay. Feel free to watch this and then read it afterwards. Uh, but do read it because I think it's an interesting, helpful discussion of the trolley problem. And Judith Jarvis Thompson was one of sort of the major figures to introduce and talk about the trolley problem. So a little bit of background on the trolley problem. Uh, it was introduced in 1968, I wanna say, in the 1960s by a British philosopher named Philip Afoot. And uh, Philip Afoot introduced it in a paper talking titled Abortion and the Doctrine of Double Effect. So she was uh, discussing the doctrine of double effect, which is, is a particular ethical view about intentions and how our intentions and what we intend to do with an action, how that determines what is morally good to do and morally bad to do. She attributes it to Catholicism uh, is where she says it comes from. And in that, she just sort of offhandedly introduces the trolley problem as a thought experiment to illustrate her point. And then Judith Jarvis Thompson, shortly afterward, a few years later, uh, citing Philip Afoot, reintroduced the trolley problem, went into way more detail about it, and provided lots of different versions of it. And so all the versions we're going to talk about in this lecture come from Judith Jarvis Thompson and her paper, where she introduces lots of different versions of the trolley problem, many of which don't involve trolleys at all. Uh, but we're only going to talk about a couple. We're going to talk about sort of the main ones, but she has lots of versions to talk about. And just so we're all clear, uh, trolley uh, is the word used because Philip Foote, it was uh, British, and so she used British terminology. Uh, so when she says trolley, just think like train. Uh, imagine a train. Uh, or the sort of like electric streetcar trolley, if you've ever been to San Francisco, that sort of thing uh, is what she has in mind. But if, if you don't know what a trolley is or what she's talking about, just in your head, substitute in train. So the trolley problem is a thought experiment. We talked about thought experiments uh, at the start of class. There was the first weekly assignment was about thought experiments. So the trolley problem is a thought experiment. And it's meant to help us investigate a certain ethical question about the difference between killing someone and letting someone die and our moral obligations and whether or not letting someone die is worse than killing them ourselves. So if you remember the Dr. Gray uh, life support example in the pig that wants to be eaten book that we read excerpts from, the Dr. Gray thought experiment, it sort of asks this kind of question, or at least a question that's very similar to this. Is letting the patient die the same as killing, him, killing them? Is Dr. Gray doing something morally wrong by not plugging the patient's life support unit back in, knowing that the patient will die? Is it really morally different just to let the patient die and do nothing to save them when you know you could? Is that really different than actively killing them and pulling the plug out from the life support machine yourself. That's one thought experiment that sort of gets at this question. But the trolley problem thought experiment uh, gets at the question a little differently. So the original trolley problem thought experiment, or the main version of the trolley problem thought experiment, goes like this. So uh, a trolley or a train is barreling down the tracks with no brakes, and it's going down the tracks towards five innocent people. And the five innocent people cannot get out of the way. They can't move. There's no way for them to escape. So the train is barreling down the tracks towards these five people. But between the train and those people, there is a a fork in the tracks. There is a place in the tracks where if you switch, if you flip a lever, the tracks will turn 
from the tracks towards these five people and turn towards different tracks. And on these different tracks, there's one person, one innocent person who also can't escape. And so the question is, you are standing next to the lever. So you are the only person with the opportunity to pull the lever. And the question is, should you pull the lever? So uh, ordinarily, if it wasn't during pandemic times, we would have a classroom and a whiteboard and I would draw on the whiteboard and give everyone a visual aid that way. Uh, and you would get to witness my terrible artistry in real time. Uh, we're not in a classroom, but at home, I do have a whiteboard. And so we're going to see if this helps, it might not. So here's the setup. The train slash trolley is barreling down the tracks towards these five innocent people. And you are off here on the side and you can pull this lever right here. You and you alone can pull this lever. No one else can pull the lever, but you can pull the lever. And if you pull the lever, then the tracks will switch and go down here towards this one person. So you have to choose whether or not to turn the tracks to kill this one person rather than these five people dying. And that's the thought experiment. So the thought experiment asks, should you pull the lever? Should you pull the lever? If you do not pull the lever, then these five people will die. If you do pull the lever, this one person will die. So if you don't pull the lever, these five people die, but this one person who's not in harm's way will die. Won't die. Uh, if you don't pull the lever, these five people will die and this one person won't. If you do pull the lever, these five people are saved, but now this one innocent person dies. And that's the thought experiment. And so different people have given different answers to this. Uh, and there are two questions we can ask here, two distinct questions we can ask. One is, what do you have to do? Morally speaking, what do you have to do? What are you obligated to do? What is it your moral duty to do here? And the other question we can ask is, what can you do? What are you allowed to do? What is it morally okay or morally permissible for you to do? So you might think, for example, that you have a moral obligation to pull this lever. You have a moral obligation to redirect the trolley away from these five people and towards this one person. And that it's not okay to do nothing. You have to pull the lever. You have a moral duty to pull the lever. That's one answer you can have. Another answer you can have is that it's okay morally to pull the lever but it's also okay morally not to pull the lever. You might think that it's morally permissible to do either one. Or in other words, you don't have an obligation one way or the other. You're not required to pull the lever, but you're also not required not to pull the lever. That's one view you can have. Or of course, you might think you have an obligation not to pull the lever. So you, you might think that by pulling the lever, you are killing this one person and that that is not okay. That you, if you pull the lever, you cause this person's death. Whereas if you do nothing and you don't pull the lever, more people die, but you don't cause those deaths. And so you might think you have an obligation not to pull the lever, that it's not morally okay to pull the lever. And so those are different views you can have. You might think you have to pull the lever. You might think you have to not pull the lever. Or you might think you don't have to do anything one way or the other. Either option is acceptable. Pulling the lever and not pulling the lever would both be morally okay. So those are three different views you can have about the trolley problem. And there are different views in ethics that will give you different answers here. 
and we'll talk about those later. Uh, so soon we're going to talk about Kantianism and utilitarianism, and they'll give sort of different answers to the trolley problem, to what you should do. But uh, I think the most common sort of early intuitions, which we would talk about, uh, or which we will talk about, the most common sort of early intuitions that I think people have in both in the things I've read and in just talking to students and other people, uh, the most common intuition seems to be either one of two things. Either the intuition is you have to pull the lever because that way fewer people die. If you don't pull the lever, five people die. If you do pull the lever, one person dies. And five deaths is worse than one death. So if you can limit the deaths to just one rather than five, then you should do that. You have to do that. That's one common sort of answer, one common view people have to the trolley problem. You have to pull the lever because five deaths is five deaths is worse than one death. And so if you can limit the number of deaths to just one rather than five, then you should. Morally, you ought to do that. The other most common intuition uh, that I think people have is that you cannot pull the lever, that it's morally wrong to pull the lever. Because by doing that, you interfere in the situation and you actively cause someone's death. By pulling the lever, some people think, you are killing the one person. Pulling the lever, you're killing this person down here. Whereas these five people here, you're not killing them. You've done nothing. You just walked up to this situation and saw that this was happening and chose not to intervene. But the intuition is that you aren't killing these people if they die and you don't pull the lever, but you are killing this person if you pull the lever and they die. So killing people is wrong, so you cannot pull the lever. Those are sort of two common views and two common justifications for those views. Uh, now, not everyone agrees with either of those views, uh, and there are arguments for and against both sides. Some people think that, uh, you know, death is bad and five people dying or one, people, one person dying, it's just, death is bad. And so counting deaths, some people think that you shouldn't do that, that that's weird. Other people think that uh, refusing to pull the lever is selfish and therefore immoral because you're refusing to get your hands dirty, even though it brings out a better outcome overall. Uh, but, you know, refusing to get your hands dirty and refusing to kill someone seems morally right. So maybe that's the right answer. Maybe it's the wrong answer. Uh, we're going to talk about sort of different ethical theories and what they say about these uh, different cases as we go through the ethics unit. And so for the weekly assignment this week, you're going to need to pick a view on not just this version of the trolley problem, but on all of the versions that we'll talk about and try to give an argument for it. And so you might are end up arguing for the view that you should always kill the one to save five. You might end up arguing for the view that you should never kill one to save five. You might end up arguing for the view that this is all just a matter of opinion and uh, there is no fact here to be right or wrong about. That's a Vine view too. And we'll talk about that later when we get to meta ethics, which asks, whether or not there are any moral facts or moral truths at all. Maybe morality is all an opinion or a matter of opinion. Maybe morality uh, is relative to what culture you're in. Maybe morality is a real objective truth out there in the world, just like gravity and the existence of owls and things. It's not a matter of opinion. It's, there's a fact there. Uh, they're all different views that all have arguments for and against them that we will talk about later. All right. But so this is the main or original version of the trolley problem, right? This is the original version. There are, however, other versions of the trolley problem. And so one version 
that uh, Judith Jarvis Thompson introduces is, well, there are different names for it. One name is uh, called the bridge example. Uh, it's also called the fat man example. Uh, I'm not sure that's the preferred term, but that is one example. Uh, so in the uh, bridge or fat man example, there are no levers and there are no tracks. Instead, you are on a bridge over the tracks. And on that bridge, there is another person. And this person is much larger than you. Uh, hence why this is sometimes called the fat man. So you, there's uh, you on the bridge, and there's the so-called uh, fat man or the large person. And you have to pick whether or not to push this large person off of the bridge. So I've now drawn a suitably terrible uh, artistic rendition of the problem so we can talk about it. So just like before, you have a trolley and it's barreling down the tracks towards five innocent people. So that part's the same. But now instead of having a lever and there being additional tracks that go to another person, now you're standing on a bridge over the tracks between the trolley and the five people. And you're standing next to an enormous person. A really large, just imagine like bigger than any actual person. Picture like eight feet tall, huge body, weighs 1,400 pounds, like huge person. They're an innocent person. They've done nothing wrong. Uh, that's clear. All of these people are innocent people who've done nothing wrong. None of them like deserve to be killed by a trolley or anything like that. But so you have these five people on a track, trolley or train, whichever you prefer, barreling towards them. And you're on a bridge with this incredibly large person. And now you know for a fact that if you push this person off of the bridge and onto the track, then the trolley will hit them and they will die. But since they're so heavy, they will stop the trolley. They will stop the train. And so then the train will stop before it hits these five innocent people. So just like before, you can either do nothing and let these five people die, or you can intervene and have one person die, thus saving these five people. But the way you intervene is now different. In the original case, you pull a lever and redirect the trolley to hit one person rather than hit five. In this case, you personally, physically push this person off of the bridge, and so they fall to their deaths and are hit by a trolley and die. But just like before, it, you can either intervene, kill this one person, and save the five, or do nothing and let the five die. And so this is the bridge case or the fat man case. Those are the usual names for it. Uh, so some people, I can't speak for all of you, I don't know what your intuitions or thoughts were, uh, but some people in the lever pulling version of the trolley problem, they have the initial sort of thought that you should pull the lever, that pulling the lever is the right thing to do. One person dies rather than five people dying. And so that's the right thing to do. But then they don't think their initial thought is not to push the person off the bridge. Their thought is that's murder and murder's wrong. Even if it's to save five people, you shouldn't do that. But it looks like it's the same issue. It's killing one person, intervening to cause one person's death, versus doing nothing and letting five people die. So 
one question we can ask is, is there a moral difference here? Is pushing someone off a bridge so that they die morally worse than pulling a lever? Is it different? If it is, why? If it's not, why not? What makes the moral difference here? Because it's not clear that how you kill someone should make a difference uh, in whether or not it's okay to kill them. No one, I have, I've never heard anyone argue that, for example, uh, killing someone by stabbing them is okay, but killing st someone by shooting them is bad. Like, if you killed someone, you killed someone. How you did it, we don't normally think that how you kill someone makes a difference in whether or not it was okay to kill them. Usually murder's wrong, regardless of what the murder weapon was. That's our usual view that most of us have, I think. Uh, so if there's a moral difference here, we have to explain what it is. We have to be able to argue that there is a moral difference and what that moral difference is, if we think there's a moral difference here. But we might not think there's a moral difference here. Some people think it's not okay to intervene in either situation. In the bridge case, you're not allowed to push the person off the bridge. And in the lever case, you're not allowed to pull the lever. So some people think you're not allowed to intervene in either case. You always have to let the five people die. And some people think that you have to intervene in both cases. Some people think, look, it's, it is gonna be bad. You're gonna feel guilty about it. But what you have to do morally is prevent as many deaths as you can. One person dying, not as bad as five people dying. So you have to push them off. And you have to pull the lever. So you have to kill the one to save the five in both cases. That's a view some people have. Not everyone has the view, but some people have the view. And just to be clear, this seems like a good time to sort of uh, get into some details about what to ignore here. So we might, in real life, if it wasn't a thought experiment, we might start to worry about, well, how do I know for sure that pushing this person will stop the trolley? What if it doesn't and then six people die? Don't worry about that. It is stipulated in the thought experiment that pushing this person off the bridge will definitely stop the trolley and save the five people, and that you know that. That getting rid of those sorts of what if details is part of the point of thought experiments. We just, as part of the thought experiment, we take for granted that you know for sure pushing the person off the bridge will stop the trolley before it hits the five people. And also, uh, in real life, we would worry about legal consequences. Will I go to jail? Will I be tried for murder? Will I be tried for manslaughter or any of the other crimes? Reckless endangerment, maybe. Uh, don't worry about that either. Just it, in the thought, the point of the thought experiment is partly to sort of let all those real world complications fade away so that we can focus on the core moral issue, on the real moral question here, and not worry about like legal and logistical issues that in real life would cloud our judgment and make it harder for us to get at the real moral issue. So don't worry about legal consequences. Don't worry about whether or not you would go to jail afterwards, whether or not you would be put on trial. That's whether or not uh, anyone would be mad at you. Like, don't worry about any of that. The question here is, what is it morally right to do, regardless or independent of any sort of real world legal consequences? Uh, because what you get arrested for and what's morally right, not, not the same question at all. Uh, I mean, I think we can all agree, Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested and put in jail, not for doing anything morally wrong though. Uh, so maybe this is a case where you would go to jail, but what you did was morally right. Maybe this is a case where uh, you wouldn't go to jail even though it was morally wrong. Uh, that's a different 
issue that I want us to ignore for this class. Just focus on the real moral question of whether or not you should pull the lever, whether or not you should push the person off the bridge. That's the question. All right, so those are two versions of the trolley problem. And you might, uh, you might have different views for each of the two problems. You might have the same view on both. You might think it's not okay to kill uh, the one to save the five in either case. You might think it's okay to kill the one to save the five in both cases. Uh, you might think it's necessary that you have a moral obligation to kill one to save five in both cases, or that you have a moral obligation not to kill one to save five in both cases. Uh, you, the weekly assignment will give you your opportunity to state, explain, and defend your view on these issues. Uh, but just to complicate things slightly more, uh, in addition to the bridge case and the lever pulling case, there's also another version, which uh, is sometimes called the hospital case or the doctor case or the organ case or the organ transplant case, organ donor case. And it's slightly more complicated in some ways because there are issues of like, doctors, obligations, Hippocratic oaths, things like that. Uh, but I want us to ignore all of those types of issues. Pretend you're here, you're making the decision, and you're not a doctor. Even if you are hoping to one day be a doctor, uh, for the purposes of this, you are not a doctor. Now, what is the hospital case? What is the doctor or organ case? I'm gonna call it the organ case. So, in the organ case, there's a hospital. And there are five sick people in the hospital, right? You're in a hospital and there are five sick people in the hospital. Now, each of these people is a healthy person who would live a long life, except for the fact that they each have a different organ that is failing. So one of them's uh, heart is failing, one of them their lungs are failing, one of them its kidneys. Uh, you know, pick your organs, vital organs. Each of these five people has a vital organ that is failing, and it's they each have a different organ that's failing. Now, in addition to these five people in the hospital, there is, just walked in, one healthy person. Now, this healthy person who has walked into the hospital is a perfect match for all five of these people. This person could donate lungs to the person who needs lungs could donate their heart to the person who needs a heart, could donate their kidneys to the person who needs kidneys, could donate their whatever other vital brain, I don't know, whatever other vital organs uh, these people need. This healthy person who just walked into the hospital is a perfect match for all five of these sick people. And so you are in the hospital. You are not a doctor. You have not taken a Hippocratic Oath. You do not have special obligations to uh, the hospital that doctors have. You do, have not taken any special oaths. Your only moral considerations are the moral considerations that we all have to follow every day, that we all are subject to, whatever those might be. Now, here's your dilemma, your ethical moral dilemma. If you do nothing, these five sick people will all die within 24 hours. There's no hope of them finding another donor. There's no hope of them finding new organs, except from this person. This person has not volunteered to donate organs. This person has not chosen to do it. This person did not declare, I will give my life for these five people. However, 
if you kill this person, then the doctors will be able to use this person's organs, because this person is an organ donor on their driver's license, the doctors will be able to use this person's organs to save these five sick people up here. So they can use this person's organs to save these five lives. And all five of these people will then go on to live happy, healthy, long, fulfilling lives. So your dilemma is, do you kill this healthy person and harvest their organs so that these five sick people can survive? If you do nothing, these five sick people die. If you kill this person, these five sick people live. So if you do nothing, this one person lives and goes on to live a long life, but these five people die tomorrow. If you kill this one person, then these five sick people live long, healthy lives. So your question is, do you kill the one person? Do you kill the healthy person to save the five sick people? And now, just to recap, we're not worried about side issues like, oh, well, if they're sick now, then they'll probably get sick later. Uh, we're not worried about, oh, well, if someone gets killed in a hospital, that'll reduce public trust in hospitals and more people will avoid going to hospitals and more people will die as a result. Not worried about that either. The murder is in secret. No one ever finds out about it. These five sick people will not get sick again. They will all, all the surgeries will be successful. All of these sick people will go on to live long, healthy lives without any relapses if you kill the healthy person and give them organs, give them the healthy person's organs. That's all by stipulation. That's all part of the thought experiment. So we don't wanna say, we don't wanna worry about well, what might happen if uh, the surgeries are done? Some of the organs might not take. Some of the surgeries might not be successful. We're not worried about any of that. No probabilities come into play. Guaranteed outcomes in this thought experiment. If you kill the healthy person, the five sick people stop being sick and they live long, healthy lives. If you do nothing, the five sick people definitely die tomorrow. There's no chance of recovery. There's no, well, maybe they'll pull through. Maybe they'll find another donor. None of that. Guaranteed outcomes. Either the five sick people die tomorrow and the healthy person goes on to live a long, normal life, or you kill the healthy person and they die when you kill them because that's what killing is. And as a result, the five sick people go on to live long, healthy lives. So, that's your dilemma. So three different versions of what you might call the trolley problem. Only two of them involve a trolley, but you can see all three of these thought experiments are sort of getting at the same issue. Do you cause one person's death to prevent five deaths, or do you do nothing and let five people die, but keep yourself from causing any deaths? That's the question. What changes in each thought experiment is how you cause the deaths. In the first one, you pull the lever and redirect the trolley. In the second one, you physically push someone off of a bridge. And in the third one, you have to murder someone directly in a hospital so that their organs can be harvested. Uh, I the details of how you kill them in the hospital is uh, up to you, but I do not, I'm not here to come up with like, I don't, I'm not a, I don't write for Showtime or HBO. Coming up with murder methods is not my job description. So these are the three versions of the thought experiment that I think are most important. And these are the three versions that I want us to talk about and I want you to think about. So there, the lecture, for this week is shorter in total uh, than it was last week. And that's because I want you to spend less time listening to me and more time thinking about these thought experiments. I want you to spend more time thinking about the trolley problem. Figure out what do you think is the right answer here? What should we do? What can we do? 
what is it morally acceptable to do? What are we morally required to do? What are we morally forbidden from doing? And then figure out why. If you, get, if you have a different verdict in each of these three cases, why? What makes the difference between the cases? And that's what the weekly assignment this week is going to ask you to sort of report. I want you to say what your view is, uh, what you think makes the difference between the cases, if you think there is a difference. And I want you to provide an argument for your view, an argument. So uh, I want the argument to be valid and I want the argument to be persuasive in the sense that we talked about uh, in the what is an argument lecture. So no circular arguments, uh, no outlandish, uh, like fallacious question begging type arguments. Uh, just a valid argument that could in theory be persuasive. So that isn't circular. Now, your argument might, might uh, have premises that are themselves controversial or not universally accepted. That's okay. Most arguments have premises that not everyone accepts. But as long as the premises are something that you could in theory accept before you've accepted the conclusion, without already accepting the conclusion, then that's good. And you'll get full credit for the argument part of the weekly assignment. And if you have any questions, if you have questions about the trolley problem, about the weekly assignment, about thought experiments in general, about the unit assignment, which has been sent out and which is due in a few weeks, please let me know. I will be happy to answer your questions uh, by email or in office hours. And I will try to be as helpful as I can. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. As soon as I figure out how to stop recording.